In our continuing series, Jailed Juveniles, we follow the story of a boy who defiled a four-year-old girl. Now, will society accept him back after rehabilitation? Wilson Buru now takes us through the boy's life in juvenile detention. Teenagers are probably the most confusing times in a person's life. Several changes, both emotional and physical, are taking place in the body. 18-year-old James Were, not his real name, is an inmate at the Shikusa Boston Institution and he knows all too well how these changes can lead to disastrous results if not well managed. <laughs> When James committed this heinous crime, he was living with a relative who worked as a night guard in Mumias. The relative was sleeping in the afternoon when James saw the girl while seated on this veranda. Then a conversation ensued. <laughs> He says the girl was seven years old at the time. However, the girl's close relatives contradict the statement. <laughs> Nyamweta was eight months pregnant at the time, and she recalls catching James in the act. She was at the neighbors that afternoon, then she decided to go back to her house. Stephen Panyako, the relative James was living with, was awoken from his afternoon nap to commotion outside. Naturally, he went to check what was going on. At that time, the priority was to take the little girl to hospital. The doctors ran several tests on her and came back with news no parent wants to hear. Later that evening, the boy was arrested and placed in custody. His mother, who lives in Teso near the Ugandan border, was informed of the arrest. The boy was held in the police cells for three months before his case started. As it turned out, it was a pretty straightforward case with very little defense. He was charged with defiling a minor and sentenced to three years in a Boston institution. In a bid to understand what may have contributed to this lack of control by this juvenile, we talked to Dr. Philomena Dambuki, 
a children's psychology lecturer at the Kenyatta University. She says Jim's behavior is a classic example of a child who lacks parental guidance. Internal locus of control is where somebody is able to tell themselves something. Like if this happens, this is what I'm going to do, or this one I'm not going to do. They monitor, self-monitoring. They monitor themselves, they talk to themselves, and they, how can they talk to themselves and monitor themselves unless some other person who has the knowledge has given it to them? At Shikusa, James finally got this much needed guidance courtesy of the institution's welfare office. We have different rehabilitation programs that we undertake. Mm -hmm. While here, the welfare office deals majorly with guiding and counseling of these boys and giving them career guidance also mm -hmm. to the specific maybe areas they would want to venture in. He enrolled in a tailoring class, a skill he hopes will keep him grounded once he gets back into the community. But the biggest concern for James now is whether he will be accepted back in the society after rehabilitation, especially by his own relatives. Every month, mtoto akimwangalia hivi unaona anatoa smile. Means acha msao. For a child to make it out of this institution and become a better person, support from family and friends is paramount. By the time we visited James in Shikusa, none of his relatives had ever gone to see him. Mimi sijaenda. Yaani mimi naweza kosa ngufu ya kutafuta pesa. Eh, sasa Mimi nilisema si yako na baba yake mwenye anakana mama yake au naye waende waangalie Natamani kuona wazazi wangu sana The wish of a boy who says he realized what he did wrong regrets his mistakes and is now working hard to change his destiny Wilson Buru for Katian's Jailed Juvenile series Tomorrow night on Jailed Juveniles, he's been alone most of his life. What did he do to survive? He wanted to stab me with a knife. <laughs>